and welcome to the 72 pin connector podcast we have a new face we've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a graphical overall here it might look a little different than you're used to i i gotta say like okay i've watched that video several times when we were well you were like showing off all the stuff you were doing and we were collaborating on it and you know seeing what we could change and make better it still blows me the fuck away how good <laughs> that looks. God damn. It is I, um, quite a feat of design. I love it. Thanks. I appreciate it. And um, if, you're, check? Yeah, if, if, you're, uh, if you're listening, you might have just heard a new voice, too. We have a special guest this week. We have Rob, also known as Smoke. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us, especially on such Absolutely. short notice today. We really Absolutely. appreciate it. It's always My nice having pleasure. a third person. and We haven't had you on yet, and we've been talking about it. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. I was wondering when I was going to get that invitation. <laughs> <laughs> the coveted invite to the 72 podcast. It's like all the characters waiting for their Smash Brothers letter. Yeah. Just sitting there waiting by the mailbox. <laughs> yep. You, you just see some some short, fat man running around with a headset strapped to him, flailing around, <laughs> just hands you an envelope, <laughs> flails back away. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So if you hang around the Discord, you probably already know Rob. He's uh, one of our senior mods and a, and a good friend, of course. And he also has just started streaming on Twitch again. So check him out. Absolutely. All right. You guys ready to get into some games? Let's do it. I was born ready. You were born ready. Nice. All right. Try to get all my music some... ready. Some Rocket League, as usual. One of these days, we'll do a different game, but I don't know. Rocket League's a... It's, it's a, a nice, mainstay. The yeah. moment we get uh, those offline co-op raids on Tarkov, we're doing, yeah. Tarkov, we're doing a Tarkov <laughs> cast. I'm good with that. Ah, oh, man. Tarkov would be uh, probably the hardest game we could possibly try to like have a podcast <laughs> a while playing the game effectively. <laughs> There's no way. At least I Rocket think it would be great. We're walking around super loud, just like talking about shit. Get popped. Well, okay. What would be funny is if they had proximity voice chat. So the people will be playing yeah. and then they just like roll up on this squad that's just like talking about games and their week and food <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Like what the, what is going on? This is ridiculous. <laughs> Mass confusion. Mass confusion. I'm all about that. Although Nikita has pretty much um, confirmed that VoIP will will not be an escape from Tarkov. Uh I could you know, I could see it like I like the idea of it, but most people, the way they would use it would just completely break immersion. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, that's what that's uh, his biggest reason for mm -hmm. um excluding it is because he doesn't want to ruin the immersion for the, the serious player base. Yeah. Definitely understandable. So I can't argue with that. That would be annoying. I think to run into people that are just like playing screaming, music through their screaming. mic and screaming yeah, and stuff exactly. like you just have naked hatchlings just running around the map with a hatchet <laughs> screaming their lungs out. <laughs> so I I do agree. Wrong move for Tarkov. And it has been a long while since I played a match of Counter-Strike where somebody was clearly using a soundboard. But I hit one of those last night and I got to say it was fun. It was stupid. It was everything I wanted in that moment. <laughs> like sometimes just general jackassery and buffoonery in a multiplayer game is exactly what you come to gaming for. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, mostly with that. Um, I definitely think though Tarkov is not that game. It, it's Tarkov a is not that game. Breed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tarkov is not your standard multiplayer game that you go into play for a couple hours with your boys and just jack around and have fun. I mean, you can do that. You definitely can if you have the money and the loadouts to, to, to lose. Yeah. But for most people, Tarkov is... It's tryharding. Yeah. It is straight up tryharding. Yeah, nothing, not, nothing wrong with that. It's just a very different style of game than CSGO on casual mode at midnight. Very yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played uh, CSGO um it's probably been more than a year at this point. We should play like, it like, sometime. I'm yeah. bad. I mean, like, when's the last time we had? I think we had a like a post podcast 
CSGO night. When's the last time that happened? Because that was the last time I played oh, man. it. Uh, that must have been like two years ago or something. Because oh I remember God. RS Gamer was just one tapping me from across <laughs> yeah. the map. He's like, God. <laughs> and I couldn't do anything. It's like, ah, shit, I'm going up against RS again. All right. Well, I guess I've lost. <laughs> Rob, did you ever get into CSGO? I did not. Um, I, I, I've only been into in PC gaming for about a year and four or five months at this point. Uh huh. So, um, no. Short answer. Fair enough. If any of you guys want to party up and play some Counter Strike, I am always up for it. We'll play yeah. on casual. I don't do that competitive shit. Let's just <laughs> let's just go meme around and have fun. I'm down, actually. Shotguns only. Honestly, we could probably Counter Strike as a podcast game. I've I've suggested even, that a couple times. Yeah, we should do that. Even if it's just even if it's a private lobby, like yeah. that would be fine. Be just killing each other private and talking about game. games. Private gun game. Yep. Oh, that would be gun uh, game is so good. That's my favorite. I love gun game. Yeah, we'll just do private gun game. There's plenty of maps, lots of custom stuff around. You guys want to switch it right now? No. <laughs> I, I, I am so just, just, just mid podcast complete format shift. No problem. <laughs> Let's just do it. Let me, let me just hit a couple buttons, beat boops, and we'll we'll be on it. Now nah. <laughs> we'll stick with Rock League for now. But maybe next week we could do. Uh, we can just play it on some CS:GO. That'd be fun. I'm I'm always up for that. So, uh, Adam, you you yeah. did tell me a little bit today off cast about uh, some delicious food you had, and I know we haven't oh, nearly man. talked about this enough on the show. <laughs> do we have? Do we really have to go down the Vietnamese food is amazing Worm road hole. again? <laughs> if, if you are not eating Vietnamese food right at this very second, what are you doing with your life? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I already ate it, so I'm not hungry anymore. All right. But no, it was delicious. It was wonderful. I had the, uh, I don't know what it's called. It's something in Vietnamese, but it's one of those, like, it's got the vermicelli noodles that are, like, not cold, but I guess, like, room temperature. And then it had, yeah, it had, like, two or three different kinds of meat, like, lemongrass pork and beef and something else. Uh oh, V Dobby cool. says Little Saigon. That's exactly where I got it from. Um, and then it has you know how you get the fried spring rolls. Mm-hmm. It has those in it, but they're like sliced up, like in bite-sized pieces. What? Yeah, that's it was, ridiculous. <laughs> and they give you that sauce. Uh, we talked about this earlier. I don't know what the sauce is called. Um, it's that like kind of translucent orange, really thin. I don't know. It's kind of sweet and savory sauce that they always give you with the, a lot of the appetizers and stuff. I don't know what it's called, but it had that with it. You can. I just pretty much poured it on bean sprouts, cilantro, all the you know, a little bit of lettuce. It was fantastic. Sounds delicious. And now I'm hungry again. Thanks. <laughs> so I have now decided I'm getting Vietnamese food tonight. Yep. I was going to have skyline chili, but uh, nah. Yeah. So I had that, and then now I'm having. Uh, have you guys ever had yerba mate? It's like a type of tea. Yes. Um, so I'm I'm drinking it right now, and yeah, I don't love it. To me, honestly, it kind of just tastes like grass. It's a little weird. <laughs> I was I was not uh, a fan. It, it, so, it's just like hot grass water. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not too into it. <laughs> it's I might drinkable. Come across as uncultured here, but uh, I am a one and done when it comes to tea, and that's yeah. my southern sweet tea. Hey, there's nothing there's wrong no with some comparison. southern sweet tea. Yeah, nothing wrong with sweet tea. But how I do you up on sun it? tea? What's up? Sun tea. The only sun tea I ever had growing up, or really in my adult life, actually, was my grandma's sweet tea or sun tea. Mm. Sorry. Um, it wasn't my favorite. It was good though. I only liked hers, but that's probably because that's the only sun tea I've ever had. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had sun tea. Sun tea, like, okay, sun tea sounds like like depression era cooking to anyone <laughs> who hasn't grown up in that that kind of area or culture. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, hey, we're gonna take some tea bags, put it in a jug, and then sit it outside for like a day and a half, and it'll make tea. 
with the power of the sun. And they're like, <laughs> dude, you know, like you can just boil some fucking water, right? But it's different. Like there's something about it. I don't know what it is. Huh. I'm sure. I mean, wow. it's a much longer steeping time at what is like not room temperature because it's outside, but it's not exactly hot, hot. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm sure it's. I, um, use, uh, I think I think it's Lipton is the brand. They make a cold brew tea yep. leaf. Oh yeah. And just throw same uh, kind of thing. Pretty much what I do is you know I fill a jug up with a gallon of water, put some sugar in it, throw the tea bags in there, dunk them a few times, and then throw it in the fridge, let it steep for 20, 30 minutes, and it's uh, perfect sweet tea. Nice. nice. Super easy. Delicious every time. Yeah, cold brew is cool. Cold brew coffee is good too. Oh, I mm. um, live for my cold brew Starbucks again. Yeah, might get some grief over Starbucks, but <laughs> I, you know, I used to kind of be that way, and then I realized it's just another stupid way to gatekeep the things that people enjoy. I was right. like, you know what, this is dumb. If you I like it, doing and, that. and you know what, I love a mocha frappuccino. I don't care. Caramel, Dude, caramel delicious, frappuccino man. is amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna change your life here. If you go to Starbucks in the near future, you get a cold brew uh -huh. with uh, white four pumps of white mocha and four pumps of caramel. Oh my and god! A shot of espresso and a splash okay. of sweet cream. That sounds like diabetes and amazingness. It is so <laughs> good. My uh, my favorite thing, and I I am going to get called a basic bitch because of this. My favorite thing from Starbucks is their peppermint mocha. Uh, it is yes. fucking delicious. It tastes like Christmas. I could drink those all day long. Do you get into the pumpkin spice, like lattes and stuff? No, I, I don't really like pumpkin. So okay. I, I avoided all I that. I love pumpkin. I was never a fan of the lattes. I'm not a fan of lattes in general. So like mm. the pumpkin really never did it for me either. Okay. But they well, last year, they came out with the pumpkin cream cold brew. Oh, okay. Um, So they make their cold foam, which is pretty much just cream that they throw in a blender for like 20 seconds to get it all frothy and kind of thicker a little bit kind of turn mm -hmm. it into whipped cream kind of and they throw that on top and they uh put the pumpkin seasoning or pumpkin spice yeah on Ooh. that or in that and it's, it's heavenly i've always been a little iffy on pumpkins I like i like pumpkin stuff like pumpkin pie is one of my favorite substances in in the world um and like pumpkin flavored like cookies and and stuff like that, I'm I'm all in, but I can't get into the pumpkin spice flavoring with the mix of the coffee taste. I don't know. Just doesn't work for me. Yeah, that's fair. I have got uh, a very complicated drink. Usually, usually on the show, I'm talking about like my cocktails or like this impressive thing I've just made with coffee or tea. Oh, just got the Today, high five. Have... Sorry. <laughs> Today I've got coffee with some sugar and some half and half. Yeah. Sometimes less is more, Tom. Yeah. It's it's perfect. It's perfect in almost every way. I didn't like black coffee straight up until I joined the Air Force. And it was like some like sometimes it was like the only thing that was available. Oh yeah. Mm. And that's what you, what you sometimes had to drink. You gotta do what you gotta do, and then eventually you end up liking it. Yep. It's kind of where I got how I got there, got to liking beer as well. Yeah, I think most <laughs> people like, have that same arc. <laughs> yeah. You drink it so much and you're like, well, I guess I like it now. <laughs> no, nobody likes uh, alcoholic uh, bread water on the first. <laughs> or, it's basically bread soda. I remember the my, my very first experience was, was with beer was uh, it was after my parents had a house party. Or it, maybe it was like a Fourth of July party or something, um, where they bought like an absolute ass ton of oh. beer. Good job, Tom. And there was obviously, <laughs> you know, there was beer left over from the party. And mm -hmm. my dad goes, "Here, try this." <laughs> and mind you, my dad does not drink. If he does, it's celebratory and it's like a drink, if that. Mm -hmm. So I know I knew what his his uh, mentality was in having me try the beer is I'm okay, I'm gonna ruin it for him so he doesn't, you know, go out and get drunk in high school. Ooh. Yeah. And it worked. Because <laughs> it was PBR. Oh no. Oh I'm sorry. 
<laughs> is that child abuse? That that might be child abuse. You telling me you didn't just take a sip and immediately go, "Hell yeah, brother." No, because I guess I'm not American. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I didn't actually like beer until I found like the uh, the Belgian varieties, like stuff with like heavy citrus, that heavy Belgian spice, like wheat ales. That's when I actually figured out what kind of beer I like. Like even today, IPAs or anything with a real heavy hops presence, nah, uh-huh. nah, just just skip me. Not feeling it. Count me out, fam. Like normal everyday mainstream beer. It's like your Sam Adams or whatever. It's fine. It's fine. It's it's not something I'm gonna go out of my way to get, but I'll drink it. But you give me like a good Belgian triple or, or something like that. Oh my god. Oh, I tried to get the bump. Oh, almost bump. That was a bit nice. <laughs> What's up, Miss Sarcasm? It's actually my girlfriend, by the way. Nice. Miss Sarcasm <laughs> in the chat. Nice. I think she was calling out your uh, your tea steeping time frame. Yeah, she is. She's always calling me out on my BS. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs somebody like that, though. I married keeps, that. Keeps us all humble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a prime example. <laughs> Tom, Tom especially is the kind of person that needs that. Yeah, I need somebody to keep me in line. That's that's why I married Comrade Bunny <laughs> and why I have the bunny on my car. <laughs> Dobby <laughs> says he also married that. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I think we have to we have to marry people that keep us in check, or the world will never be the same. Oh, she's real good at keeping me in check, but sometimes <laughs> I like to rebel and <laughs> I pissed her off a little bit. It happens. Oh man! So, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to look for my show notes and in, in chat in <laughs> League. It's just it's not working. There we go. There it is. Oh no! But notes. now I can't see my games. Oh. Right, there we go. <laughs> so I um, going to be doing this consistently. I would need a third monitor. 100%. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to have a third monitor for this. Um. So I've been playing through Black Mesa, and I feel like I've been playing through it for the past. I don't know. How many times have I talked about it on the show? Like the past two months. Um, you mean like this year or like the last time you first <laughs> uh, started playing let's, it? <laughs> let's, let's keep it to this year. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Maybe four, five? Yeah. So a, a whole lot of time, which usually when we're, you know, talking about games that we're playing, unless it's like a multiplayer oh. thing or something that lasts forever, uh-huh. it's, you know, on for maybe a week or two and then it's gone. I forgot how fucking big old games were. Black Mesa takes a while to get through. Like I am, I am just now rounding the end of the original Half Life game because uh. I just I forgot how fucking long that game was, and it's not bad. Like I'm I'm enjoying my time with it, but mm-hmm. I'm just like, wait, is this the part where it turns into the ending? No, okay. <laughs> I've been feeling like that for the past five hours of gameplay. Like, is this really the? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. No, now I remember this part. All right, so that's that's like another two hours. And like I'm doing all these mental time calculations in my head. The game just doesn't end. You're just there do forever. You, do you know how long the actual playthrough is? Um, I want to call it twenty hours. I mean, it's not it's not super long, but that's decently you, long for a shooter, though. Yeah, yeah. When you compare it to something like Bioshock, for instance, which I fucking love. Bioshock, Bioshock is, awesome. is what? It's like, like 10 eleven. Hours? Yeah, ten or eleven, something like that. Yeah, I was looking at it the other day when we had our in our group chat. We were talking about, um, or it was it Dan that brought up that The Last of Us Two felt like it was really long. So yeah. I was, so I was looking up how how long a lot of games were, and mainly AAA titles and stuff, just out of curiosity. And yeah, I think the Bioshock series, basically all the games in the Bioshock series, are like 10, 12 hours tops. Ooh. And they feel great. Like I, it, 10, 10 to twelve hours for Bioshock. I think it's a perfect amount of time. It didn't feel drug on too long. It, it hit all the high points I wanted it to. Yeah. Dobby calls out uh, The Last of Us 2 is very long. I kept expecting it to end and it never did. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's... Yeah. I, don't, I don't even know if I want to say how long the average playthrough is just because it's still so new. And I... I'm one of those yeah. people where I feel like almost every little piece of information you could have about a game is a spoiler. Like mm. when when somebody says spoilers, 
usually they're talking about like you know story stuff uh twists stuff like that dude i don't even want to like i don't even watch trailers for stuff once i know that i'm interested i don't want to know if anybody i don't even really want to know if anybody liked it like (laughs) actually i prefer reading books digitally because the fact that you can feel the book getting thinner on the back is itself a story. <laughs> it kind of like, is, honestly. Like, oh no, I'm coming to the end. I know. Yeah. Especially like, because I've, I was reading, I forget what it was, but I was reading some book digitally and like it had reached like this high point. I'm like, holy shit, this got to be like the middle of the book. And then like a scene happened that was shocking and horrifying and it just ended the next fucking page. I was like, what the fuck did I just read? <laughs> what happened? Like it was whiplash. Like it was, it was there and there and there and gone, just that quick. Yeah, it's funny how that works. And uh, so, yeah, you were talking about Black Mesa. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's fun. It's it's great. Uh, one of the things that Black Mesa still carries on, even though it's not a Valve title, is uh, Valve's way of doing um, environmental storytelling. So walking through, looking at stuff, even even without people around to be like, oh, look at this object. Here's the story behind it. Here's some lore. I'm going to give you a lore dump now. <laughs> nah, instead you walk around and you're like, wait a minute. Why are these things here? That means that they knew about this shit before it all. Oh my God, they were the real bad guys all along. <laughs> and it was, it was great. And I don't mind spoiling Half-Life. It came out in 1998. Yeah, yeah. At some point, it's like, okay. You can't, yeah. you're, you're, you can't <laughs> spoil a game because it's been out for so long yeah yeah you can only live under a rock for so long before you hear something about something i don't i don't know where that cutoff is though like because yeah, what is the cutoff the remake came out everyone's just like well do we do we talk about the fact that you know the thing happened and even even now like i don't know do i mention things that happened in a 20 year old game because yeah. it is a re-release yeah. a lot of people are playing it for the first time i don't want to be that guy i think i think in that case you would kind of want to not say too much about it because even though it's it's an old game with an old story it's it's a remake right it's not just a remaster yeah and i think that's different but uh yeah black mesa is is fun i keep getting new interesting weapons and i forgot how many fucking weapons you get in uh in half-life one like it's got a massive inventory hmm. um the, the only thing I don't like about the game, like looking looking back at the game in this modern lens, um, is that the gunplay feels very, very floaty and not impactful. Like you'll you'll hold down, you'll start spraying a, an assault rifle and or an SMG. And it just it feels like a garden hose. It's like, OK, well, we'll we'll spray this way. Hey, All right. He fell over. But it's not real punchy. If if that makes sense, just feels like you're super soakering everybody. Yeah, like most <laughs> most of the weaponry in Black Mesa, with with a couple really notable exceptions, like the uh, the Magnum, for instance. The Magnum has got like this pop. It's got a big recoil. You cannot fire it very fast. Uh, it it definitely feels like a winner. Um, but the SMG, nah, not even a little bit. Um, still very useful, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, I guess the, the good side on this is that it feels a whole lot like the original Half-Life. So They got the Fair accuracy enough. now. That's good. I never did play... Uh, I, th- I think I played a little bit of Black Mesa a long time ago. Um, I mean, probably not long after they released the first like build of it or whatever. Uh, just because I nev- I'd never played any Half-Life game at all. So I was like, ah, you know. Maybe I'll start with Black Mesa, and I, di- I didn't get super far into it. I think I got to the gravity gun stuff, and I thought that was kind of cool. Um, it was creepier. So you played, you I got. Two. Oh wait, no, I played Black Mesa too. So maybe I'm just like mixing the two. Yeah, I've I've got them jumbled up in my head. I don't know which one is which, but um, but yeah, I guess I played two at some point. I remember getting to like the the town area with the gravity gun, and it was like actually pretty creepy. I didn't realize there was, yep. yeah, I didn't realize there was like, I don't want to say horror, but I mean, it's kind of horror. It's Half-Life has definitely got a lot of horror elements to it. Yeah. Like Ravenholm is huge. Of course, uh, you, uh, quote, played through Jeff. 
in oh, Half-Life. Oh, yeah, that was fantastic. Um, uh, Half-Life 1 had a bunch of stuff like that, too. Where it's just like, I don't want to be here. I just don't want to be here. I got to get through here. I don't want to <laughs> be here. This is not <laughs> an enjoyable time to me. Yeah. Uh, which is perfectly Half-Life. Yeah, I guess so. But yeah. Rob, what have you been uh what have you been getting into this week? The old same old same old same old same old Tarkov. Yeah. That's all I do. You're it professional. is my go-to. It is my baby. It is my favorite game in probably the last ten years, honestly. Like no exaggerations there. I haven't played a game this much this consistently then some maybe maybe call of duty for the original modern warfare wow jesus you know i've had my games that i've been like oh yeah i really really like this game but i told you guys this off cast but to put it into perspective i've had tarkov since uh the 28th of december and since then i've put a thousand hours into it which jeez i feel like is uh, a little Holy absurd maybe? Crap. that's a lot yeah, it's a lot of time into a game, but yeah, and it, it's funny how it all started because I think Acro was one of the first ones in our community that that uh, started playing Tarkov. Uh huh. Because he's been following it for a while, and he wanted somebody to play with, so he actually bought me the standard edition of Tarkov. Oh, cool! And that's how I got into it, and it's even funnier because he stopped playing it. Pretty much like two <laughs> weeks after he bought it for me. Nice. Uh, it's funny how that works. I have absolutely done that to people. Like, oh, this is the best game in the world. I'm going to play this forever. Uh-huh. I'm going to buy everybody. Ca- no, nah, I'm done. I'm done. You have fun, guys. See ya. <laughs> I'm out. Acro did kind of start playing with us uh, off and on lately since the new yeah. update and stuff. The wipe and everything. Yeah. yeah. It's always a good place to get back into it, I feel. Yeah. I kind of feel like I missed it because I haven't launched it since the wipe. And like, I don't, yeah. I don't know where that cutoff is. Like, do I even try or do I just You've keep got it? about I mean, a week and a half, maybe two weeks to get uh, into the game again after the wipe because there's already people who are at the end game stage for the game. Like, they have finished every quest. They have multi-million dollar uh like the stash value Mm. i kind of one thing i wish tarkov would do is for and again this is quite literally just for players like me who who don't make this their their mmo because that's basically what tarkov is right right um you you play it like an mmo um i i wish that they would look at you know, their entire player base is loadouts and quests and stuff like that. And then just say, all right, we're going to give you the 50% mark of that. Like, if everybody's running the highest level gear, you're not going to, like, you'll get what the majority of players have. So you can be competitive out of the gate. Right. Uh, instead mm-hmm. of this thing where, like, I'm I'm using the pea shooter versus all this fucking thick armor and, you know, I, I can't hit shit because I'm just, I haven't played. Yeah. I mean, I will. So there, there is a period of time where people, like the majority of the player base, has gotten to a certain point, and it might be a little bit harder to join in. But I mean, like when we first bought Tarkov, we were mid wipe, and we still really got into it and loved it. And you're always gonna have people that are just now getting the game, regardless of where it is in the wipe. Like somebody probably just bought the game and will play. You'll have that like constant uh, cycling. Uh, of new Ooh. players coming in. And then you've also got the people that decide to uh, like start fresh on a new account and play like hardcore mode or something. Or like a lot of the streamers will do that. They'll basically get their main account up and get every quest done in the game and you know what's left to do from there. So they'll start a new account and then like set rules for themselves on this playthrough or you know play through on a standard account without all the extra bells and whistles from the, the enhanced editions and stuff. Um, woot so, enhanced editions. What? I the said EOD. Woot, woot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woohoo, enhanced. But yeah, I think even even though there is that wipe cycle and there is a general progression of the 
player base on average, you're always going to have those outliers and those new players coming into. You're not going to yeah. go into a raid and not stand a chance. Like you, you can always make something of it. Ooh, and more so than anything, what I've noticed over the last seven to eight months playing Tarkov is, yeah, you know, having the 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 good gear, the meta gear is going to give you a really big advantage against, you know, those lower level casual players who can't devote a, a tremendous amount of time to the game. Map knowledge and game sense in Tarkov are just as important mm -hmm. because if you know where to be in a fight, all you have to do is land one shot. If you if you can, you know, if they don't have a helmet on or if they have, you know, they don't have the the ear attachments to your armor or to their helmets, excuse me, you can, no matter what bullets you're running, you can one tap them to the head. So if you know where to position yourself, you can, you can clap cheeks, so to say, <laughs> and you can take, you can take those chads out and take their gear. I, I love the whole Chad versus rat thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's so perfect. You've got the the beefy chads with the giant bank accounts and the the highest tier armor and decked out weapons that are just like stomping through, sprinting through the map. They don't care who hears where they are. Come get me. I'm a chad. I'll take you on head on. And then you've got the rats, the slimy, greasy, <laughs> sneaking around, camping one room, you know, <laughs> using every tiny footstep they hear to to position players and you know taking the leftovers after a fight happened that they didn't participate in just like <laughs> scrounging and scavenging and i don't know there's are you describing I, I love it style or, or is this a generalized thing are, are you attacking tom directly or are you just no that? no i, I feel no i play that way a lot i don't care <laughs> <laughs> i'm a dirty rat in tarkov and i don't care like at, at its core, it's a survival game. Like there, there are, you know, different ways to play, and both are fun and enjoyable in their own ways. I I like sneaking around and like trying to, uh, oftentimes avoid players. Yeah, and not absolutely. seeking out the PvP, and you know, only maybe getting some like okay attachments and like a mediocre gun off of a dead body and and getting out with it. It's I don't know. I feel, I feel like so a lot of people in Tarkov probably feel this way. You know, obviously PVP is a is a very large part of it and people, you know, crave that and want to be in PVP and even if you're not, like you can look at the game so many different ways and consider, you know, a raid to be a win, mm -hmm. right? Like you can like, okay, I have I have to kill 15 scavs, right? And if you set smaller goals for yourself, like oh, I'll be, I'll, I'll be happy if I even get you know five scab kills with this loadout to, mm -hmm. for this quest. I uh, actually got that kind of thinking from Pesley, you know, one of the OG Tarkov streamers. It's just like too many people take dying too like too seriously in Tarkov. Yeah, you're gonna have to get used to dying. Right. Like Sometimes the, the randomly, moment. without warning, without explanation, there's no kill cam. <laughs> you don't know where it came from. You don't know who it was. You don't know if it yeah, was. Here's the bullets. It could have been a hacker. It could have been some guy that just you know had a had the high ground, right? And you didn't know that he was there. It could it's be anything. Over, <laughs> I've got the high ground. But no, there's that, and uh, I don't know. One of my favorite things is. Using gear that you found or got off of somebody you killed in raid the next time, like I would rather use a a gun with mediocre attachments and stuff that I got in a cool way, like from a player or a scav boss, or even if I just found like a an abnormally decent gun laying around. Like I would rather use something that I found in a previous raid than to build like like to just access the flea market and buy exactly the parts that I want for exactly the gun I want. Like it turns it there. There's the survival aspect of the game of like scrounging up for the parts that you need to build a decent gun. That's satisfying more so to me anyway, than just like the, 
uh, I don't know how did I put it the other night, Rob, the like capitalism simulator of just like, oh, yeah, all right, let me you... let me swipe my credit card and give me this this gun with all the <laughs> best attachments on it, right? Right, just like you know, going onto the flea market and buying every little piece of equipment that you need mm-hmm. to to go into a raid and be successful. Yeah, but I totally agree with you. Like, if you were to like, I think one of my favorite fights ever. Um, I was on reserve. This was like one of my very first raids after I got my Red Rebel pickaxe, so I could go out that extract at the top, that dynamic extract that you can only take if you have paracord and that special pickaxe. I just bought it for like 7 million rubles. I was like, man, this hurts. Let me go try to farm some money on reserve. And I go in with a really nice kid. I was like wearing a slick armor. I had you know, an airframe and like a meta M4. I walk into the first building I walk into, there sits Glucar or Gluhar and his boys, his six Raider guards. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Scav I'm boss. Die. These I'm are going. like super AI. They're like AI with the difficulty turned up to 11. And I'm sitting here like, hmm, how do I fight this? I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to bait them and I'm going to get them to all walk into my room. And I did that and I killed the entire squad by myself in a matter of like maybe 90 bullets jesus <laughs> and this, also- was, this was also before the weight update so i had probably 130 <laughs> kilos worth of gear on me <laughs> and i walked out the extract this was probably it was it probably took me you know 15 minutes to to get it all you know all get them all killed and get all the loot you know assorted into my bag so I was in the raid for less than 15 minutes. And I think I ended up making somewhere in the neighborhood of like four to five million rubles. Jesus. Damn. So I almost paid for that Red <laughs> Rebel pickaxe that cost me seven million rubles in one run. Wow. Yeah, Tar- Tarkov is good for those moments. Those moments uh, that'll I stick with you after a long time of playing. Ooh. One of my, I think that's one of the main reasons I keep coming back is because I have so many like, memorable fights where mm-hmm. i'm just like wow i just outplayed this dude <laughs> so hard yeah like, holy i think just be- tarkov has the highest stakes yeah. of any first person shooter per per right. like match or whatever and that just yeah. high stakes makes inherently compelling gameplay um you want more you always stressful want more. it makes it more stressful it makes the highs higher and the lows lower and there's there's something to be said about it for sure. One of my another memorable fight I had was also on reserve, um, but this was one of my naked sniper runs. So I for a naked sniper run, I go in um, with a DVL so like the suppressed DVL sniper rifle, two mags, and meds. And I just go I go sit in a tower and I shoot juicy chads in the face <laughs> from across the map. <laughs> This was about maybe five or ten minutes into the raid. I hear some dude running up in my tower, and I'm like, lay, I'm laying down in the doorway of the tower, and I see him, and I quick scoped him, thoraxed him, so I shot him in the chest and I killed him. And I was like, holy shit, this was insane. <laughs> Grabbed his MP7, peeked over the edge, and I saw his buddy launching a grenade at me. So I <laughs> and then I just lasered him with his his teammates mp7 and killed him <laughs> oh. and uh killed him before he got the grenade off thankfully because i think he would have gotten that grenade up there i would have been dead because you know the little tower there's not much room not much room to move around man killing killing somebody with his buddy's gun that's cold <laughs> yeah it's just kind of rude <laughs> very satisfying yeah and they were both super juiced the second guy I had i believe it was a meta hk with four sixty rounders of M995. Adam, you know what you know top, what that top tier ammo. It's very expensive. <laughs> and before this patch where the where it was where you could just sell literally everything on the flea market. You know how much four sixty rounders of M995 is worth. Yeah, it's that's a lot. Big big returns on that one for sure. All the returns. <laughs> Yeah, we got we got some pretty good runs in today. Um, 
lot I don't of I don't think done. we yeah yeah we got a lot of quests done. It was one of those days we didn't get a lot of like a whole PvP. lot of action and PVP and player kills and stuff, but we got a lot done, which right. which is cool in itself. Huge. I like Huge that. Tarkov. Especially when you're making progress towards that thick items case. <laughs> Always something to grind for, which is cool. Um so yeah. I'm I'm in a dilemma though for this one. Because I got the thick items case very late in the wipe, comparatively speaking, to when I'm, you know, because I'm, you know, we're almost there. We have maybe two more quests to do to mm -hmm. get it. And by the time I got it last wipe, I already had like 25 million rubles. So I didn't need to sell it to. Oh, uh, I see. Juice up my economy. Yeah. But now. I'm probably. I think. Uh, I think we. F I finished at like maybe six point four million rubles today. Mm -hmm. So I'm predicting myself to be anywhere between eight and ten by the time that I actually end up getting that thick case. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it or if I'm going to sell it to to boost the economy. Yeah, I sold. I mean, I sold it immediately last last time, and it was almost the sole reason I had a decent economy there for a while. Like it was so nice just to have that headroom and to not feel like I'm. You know, Drowning. scrounging up, yeah. It actually, it got to the point when I bought the items for that quest to get that item, and I was so mm -hmm. broke I couldn't put it on the flea market right away because of the <laughs> fee, flea market fees were oh, more money yeah. than I had. <laughs> They've actually so, yeah. um, recently have taken countermeasures against um, RMT sites. In Tarkov, by increasing the the flea market taxes. Oh, okay. I tried to in, um, I tried to sell an item. I think it was D fuel, um, which is a barter. They said no, it's an item used for a, a high level barter. I think I'm not, I think it's used in maybe a, a weapons case barter or something. Mm -hmm. And it usually goes for anywhere between like one hundred and ten thousand rubles to all the way up to like two fifty at, at its peak. I, try, I found one in raid yesterday, and I tried to list it. The fee, I, I listed it for maybe 170, I think, and the fee was 150k. Oh my god! So I was, it was going to as much as the 20K. item, right? Yeah, so I was like, well, it. I guess I'll just hold on to this until they yeah. either, you know, take away that countermeasure against RMT, mm -hmm. or I'll just use it for the barter. For, for those listening, if you're not familiar with RMT, it's real money trading. So people mm. will will set up sites and exchange, you know, real money for in-game items and stuff. Kind of a huge problem, especially for a game like this that has a like a player-driven economy. Stuff like that right. can just completely mess up it the, basically the game for everybody. Turn the, it can turn the game into pay-to-win, which yeah. um, Battlestate Games has uh, very vehemently said that they're not going to be. They're not going to have microtransactions. They're not going to have pay-to-win features. Uh, Solely just, you know, to keep that immersion mm -hmm. aspect of the game. So when you have sites out there that are solely dedicated to pretty much turning it into a pay to win game, you know, it, it becomes a very serious issue and it, it kind of, you know, goes against everything that, that Battle State has worked to create over the last five and a half years at this point. Mm -hmm. Because production started in 2015. Which is crazy to think about that the game is, you know, five and a half years old, and it's it's we still just in, heard it's about it last yeah. year. Yeah. Was uh was real money trading a problem in like WoW or something? Yeah, real money trading has been a problem in every game. Yeah. If I you guess can it, trade items, people are going to make sites to for sure. Yeah. To sell them. But like in in some games that doesn't really affect everybody so much as it i mean, obviously it affects the developers and stuff but yeah you know yeah like if it's if it's just cosmetics um like csgo you can pay real money and it actually um it uh is officially supported like if you go to the steam marketplace you know i i have dropped 50 cents i have dropped a whole dollar and given uh -huh. it to some dude for like his ak-47 skin because it was neat <laughs> and that's cool. Like you can you can do that. It's it's part of the game. Now the skins do not change your gun in any substantial way. They just look prettier. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's literally it. Um, Dobby calls out Diablo three tried to add it to their game officially. Like Blizzard had a real money auction house. 
um, that caused insane amounts of problems. So uh, try like imagining a system where you make sure that players are only earning your items legitimately, right? Like mm -hmm. they're not duping save files. They're not, they're not, uh, you know, cheating or hacking your game or anything like all the security that goes into that and then add real money incentives on top of that. Like, hey, if you hack the game and get this item, that's like 15 bucks. That's a whole month on your World of Warcraft subscription. And it caused a shit ton of problems for Blizzard. So they took it out. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> that sounds like a giant mess. Yeah. Yep. I actually so, heard um, from one of my favorite Tarkov streamers, Clean, that they have that the hat the pay to or not pay to win the really big popular cheat websites um, that make cheats for Tarkov have are now offering free trials, so it is like exponentially spiking the amount of hackers that that um, people are seeing oh, in game. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Any any kind of system where people can just make a new account and play a game without you know that that price right. barrier to entry you're going to see huge mm -hmm. increases huge in cheating right which might be one of well i don't know it's tough for the free to play games for sure and I, probably I, like, way more so first, i was really surprised at like how many people were just remaking accounts in tarkov because that game's not cheap that's it's 40 dollars. no for the it's not edition. Mm -hmm. But you have these people who, you know, run these cheat websites who are, you know, pulling in exorbitant amounts of money. You know, getting these sheets. So they're just, you know, out there buying accounts left and right. And they're selling the accounts to people who uh, work for them. And they like, it's like, it's a whole scheme, like right? the hacks plus the RMT, right? Like you have people mm -hmm. who are pulling in money from the RMT who get accounts to hack. And they uh, sell gear and earn money from their RMT sites to buy, keep buying accounts. It's just, it's like this whole vicious cycle. And, yeah. you know, Battlestate is just doing like everything in their power to, you know, combat them. And it's, mm -hmm. it's even gotten to a point where they're taking developers away from, you know, working on the game itself to combating hackers and RMT. So it's slowing down the progress of the game. And people wonder why it's been, in development for five years <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a huge problem that sucks video games are hard to make they are hard yeah. to make confirmed so um what else have uh uh rob you said you played just tarkov this week since you're uh yeah, pretty much well, a little addicted but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> it's all right wrong with that. oh my god that tarkov hits so hard man <laughs> <laughs> Tom, what else have you been getting into this week? <laughs> uh, not any Tarkov, sadly. Yeah. Um, I have been uh, absolutely addicted to Beat Saber. Yeah, uh, as we've been usual. watching. <laughs> um, so I moved all my Beat Saber streaming to uh, Discord, which I complained about at length last week, so I won't, I won't subject you all to that. Um, but I have a fitness update. So the whole reason I've been getting like super far into Beat Saber the past couple months is because while I am locked inside, there's not a whole lot of options for exercise. Like I don't have my own equipment. I'm not going to go to the shared apartment equipment. There's still mm -hmm. a pandemic. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to run outside because humans are outside. And anyway, outside sucks. Have you been out there? It's awful. <laughs> um, so I've been using my VR system as the only form of exercise I get. Um, so I've been playing a whole lot of Beat Saber, usually do about a half an hour to an hour per day. Yesterday I did 90 minutes. That was a mistake. <laughs> I, I had trouble moving. Wow. Um, yeah. T today I did an hour and then I fell asleep in my, my nice chair here. So maybe that was a mistake too. Um, but I am down. 10 pounds awesome and like awesome. like consistently, that's cool not like, not like one day i hit the mark but like right. it's consistently been 10 pounds under um which isn't it's not like a shit ton right like it's not miracle weight loss beat saber Nah, it's like it's a reasonable amount of weight for the amount Dude, of yeah again. 
Yeah, that's um, uh, that's great. That's really awesome, actually. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's not a trivial it's amount. Working. It's working. Like, it's is it going to change your entire life? Nah, but you know, it's a, is it going to get you fit if you haven't been able to do anything? Yeah, it, it could work for that because um, it is mostly cardio. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the whole thing. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a form of video gaming that is less quote unquote bad for you than than normal. Like, yeah. you know, in the in the same way that, um, like, uh, I don't know, grilled chicken is is better for you than like a fried chicken. Like, if I you're mean, if you're eating a, a whole it's lot not of better for your soul. No, and probably not. <laughs> I don't know. That's probably not the best example, but like, I guess I'm trying to think of a food that's still not good for you, but it's a better version of the, you know, Ooh. of that food or whatever. But yeah, like, it's it's a great marriage of. It's not exactly like a workout game, but the fact that you yeah. can get enough out of it to get your heart heart rate elevated for an extended period of time that's super cool, and it's fun. Yeah. My uh, my watch always classifies that because whenever you do like when it thinks you're exercising, because it tracks heart rate and stuff like that. When it thinks you're exercising, it's like, hey, are you doing are you doing this exercise? Because it's got like the patterns built into it, right? Mm-hmm. It, every time I'm playing Beat Saber, it says, hey, are you on a treadmill? Uh, sure, watch. I'm on a treadmill. <laughs> and it like watches my heart rate for the whole thing. It's like, oh, hey, look, you did this many calories. It's not it's not perfect, right? Nothing mm-hmm. nothing like that. Like the Fitbits and Apple Watches are not going to be the perfect measure of how much exercise you're getting. But if Beat Saber is good enough to trick my watch into thinking I'm doing exercise, then uh, <laughs> I don't know, it might be good enough to trick my body into thinking it's doing exercise. Yeah. I don't honestly, I don't think there's, you know, any tricking going on. Uh, <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, you know, exercising is at its core burning calories, right? Yeah. 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 So you're standing there and you're, you know, sweating your your butt off and you're 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 up and about, you're moving, you're burning calories consistently, you know, for, you know, an hour to hour and a half, however long you are, you know, playing. Mm. That's still straight, exercise. Straight up sure, exercise. You're playing a, sure you're playing a video game, but you're still exercising. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's like when um when people started putting in DDR machines and some uh, some very rich like middle schools and high schools for PE programs. Um, it's the same kind of thing, except yeah. instead of jumping around and stopping, you're jumping around and swinging. Yeah. <laughs> Although I can't relate to the DDR machines in uh, middle school or high school. I guess I was not part of that program. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that I one. Met, but... <laughs> I hadn't even heard of that. Like I didn't even know that was a thing. That was uh, that was way way after I think we all we all left high school and middle school. Yeah, um, these but... things. Things seem to have gotten a little more cushy after I left. <laughs> <laughs> the closest thing to video gaming we ever did in, in high school was uh, when we were supposed to be doing homework and research in the computer lab, we mm-hmm. would bypass the school's uh, website filter by translating the RuneScape webpage to Spanish to bypass the filter <laughs> so that we could play RuneScape while we're supposed to be working. Nice. I think my favorite thing out of high school one of my all-time favorite things is somebody brought uh, halo combat evolved very first halo on a flash drive hey. and installed it on our computers in our architecture class because we did a lot of you know computer uh, uh drafting for uh-huh. our architecture class and on the days that we had subs which was a lot because <laughs> our architect or architecture teacher was often out for some reason. I don't never, I, we never knew why he was always out, but he was always out. So on those days, we would just sit there and play Halo <laughs> for an hour. Nice. That's just awesome. a land party, pretty much. It was awesome. It was great. So uh, I can definitely feel myself getting better at Beat Saber. Like there, there are songs, like in any good music game, there are songs that will absolutely push you to your limits. And uh, that goal was so stupid. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you just like you stopped right in front of the ball. You're like, come on, make your, make your shitty attempt. 
No, uh, I'm just gonna put it over all. I you. was I was gonna do what I normally don't do, and I was gonna be nice and let whoever hit that get the goal, and then I guess they were a little closer behind me than I thought they were, so we got there for the hit. But um, but yeah, I I just like in any good music game, there are those songs that will absolutely push you to your limits. You're just like, nah, there's no way. How the fuck do I get past this song? Mm-hmm. There, you have to be a superhuman to do this shit. And uh, I'm starting to clear a couple of those, which feels really good. There's definitely a lot more on my list that I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Um, Saeed being the biggest one. I, I've got a mod that instead of ejecting you from the song when you fail, it just counts how many times you fail. Yesterday, I did this song. Um, now, previous attempts show my... Uh, basically, my failures at six failures for this particular song. Mm-hmm. Last night's attempt it was just one. Just the one. Hey, I am so close. I am on the very edge of beating this song, and only only twenty two people in the world have completed this one. Oh my god! Uh, I am I am really Impressive. really close. Progress is progress. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy about this. Um, now I it hurts because I really want to get this on film, and I am just gonna have to record everything through Discord when I run it. Um, or if I'm not streaming, like put on put on Streamlabs OBS and just record without streaming because yeah. I really want my first Saeed completion to be you know tracked. Um, as you would, as you should. You should definitely yeah. start recording those. Yeah the the main issue. Well, I guess that's not so much of an issue. Yeah, that, I, I could do that. I mean, I I've wish got plenty of hard drives. Yeah, I wish we could post them, but there's the whole DMCA <sighs> strike. Yeah. Uh, you know, copyright stuff yeah. we have to worry about which sucks i'm literally honestly, just gonna keep it as an mp4 and you know put yeah. it myself somewhere yeah which sucks because like your beat uh beat saber gameplay is like really good content like, yeah that would that would be so cool to be able to share with people but i mean i don't i don't want to brag but i'm i'm pretty you're pretty high good level. dude <laughs> i'm you're a pretty high level good. beat saber you're literally <laughs> like top 50 in a bunch of songs like in the world <laughs> Like, I, I don't think I'm, I'm bad. I, I think that people would actually enjoy watching that content. But uh-huh. thanks to you know, Twitch's changes to the terms of service, we don't get that uh, that kind of ability anymore, which really yeah. sucks. Yeah, even YouTube, like you run into a lot of yeah. a lot of stuff with that, too. It sucks. But yeah, I, I will let you all know. We'll, we'll probably just make a whole like four hour long episode of the 72 Pin Connector podcast with me just pumping my fist in the air with victory music when I beat Saeed. Um, just not, not even on a Saturday, just a completely random bonus podcast episode of me just dancing around and celebrating. Yeah. That's what I, what favorite I, podcast ever. <laughs> it would be pretty like, great. People would be watching, like, listening. Like, is, how long is this going to go for? When's the podcast start? Uh, this is guys, yeah. when when are we gonna when are we gonna get off topic and talk about food for an hour? Uh, <laughs> I um, think you mean on Tom, topic. Tom hasn't said anything about Dark Souls or Nintendo. <laughs> Tom hasn't once like called any video game company a shit house. What's going on? <laughs> I'm here. He hasn't said anything about EA being an asshole. <laughs> Oh, what the man. hell? Tom didn't just call Valorant CS Overwatch. Is is he feeling CS okay? CS Overwatch. <laughs> oh man. So uh, speaking of CS Overwatch, I actually tried to play that the other day. Yeah. Um, and by the other day, I mean last night. So I fired it up, got all the updates. I said, "All right, let's go. It's uh, it's time for Valorant. I want some of that like CS 1.6 gunplay." Mm-hmm. I was having fun watching Jake do his V10 stuff. I was like, "All right, let's." Let's see where I can get. Uh, it doesn't work. The, the game is broken for me. It, it's broken? it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Like at all? Uh, yeah, like like at all. Um, mm. And I, I think I figured out why. So it launches. You get in a match. I can like buy things in the buy menu. Can't actually turn my character, though. Like the first person part of first person shooter is just locked to that view. Like my mouse doesn't do anything. Do anything. Oh, um, that's a weird problem. So, just so everyone is aware, um, I play video games in a weird way. 
right now I'm playing on Parsec. I have my, my laptop here and I remote in so I can do cool things with having two different PCs, one running games and the other one running all kinds of other shit. Um, Valorant's anti-cheat actually completely disables emulated mouse movement for pretty obvious reasons, even though no yeah. other shooter does that. Uh -huh. But this does mean that if you're using like Steam Remote Play or Parsec or Shadow Play or Moonlight or any one of these things that allows remote access to your gaming PC, mm -hmm. yeah, Valorant's just not going to work for you ever. Oh. You can get around it by uh, by disabling um, their anti-cheat, but then you can't actually play the game. So oh, <laughs> it's a, little, <laughs> a little bit worse. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I instead of playing Valorant, went back and uh, played some Counter-Strike. And it was... It was meme stupid fun, and I loved every minute of it. And so uh, I actually did uninstall Valorant last night. If it's not going to work on my machine, I'm not going to keep it installed. Like, I get it, but kind of sucks for me. Again, weird way to play. Won't affect really anyone except if you're in this type of situation or using this kind of setup. Tom, Tom um, is never the typical user case. He is no. always the outlier. Yeah. <laughs> So it it sucks, but I'll I'll get over it. It's fine. I'll just play some CS:GO and then afterwards I'll play some Overwatch and it'll be the same thing. <laughs> I did it. I ripped <laughs> on him. Ah, nice. Also, Comrade Bunny uh, says simply in the chat, Ubisoft. Uh, Fuck Ubisoft. Tom. <laughs> That's your cue, Tom. That's your cue. Um. Yeah. So uh, in other VR news, I've been playing more Half Life, Alex. Uh, I am. I am so frustrated with myself. I am still getting scared by this game. <laughs> like the stuff that's supposed to be scary, like Jeff or whatever. I'll be like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'll move around Jeff. I'll mess with them. I'm used to that part. I've played it a lot. Um, but like the little jump scares that I should be expecting, like a head crab coming out of somewhere or falling from the ceiling or like Russell's stupid fucking quote, helpful robot appearing in a doorway after a really nasty firefight and me being on edge. I am still jumping and screaming and like covering my face and everything because I don't know how, but Valve keeps freaking me out. I know all these scares are there, but they are still effective. <laughs> yeah, it's, it it's, was it's one thing on a first playthrough, but when you know what's coming up and it still gets you, that's that's pretty this cool. This is my third. It's my third fucking playthrough. <laughs> I should not be this this scared of like a fucking head crabs falling out of ceiling tiles, but it still happens. It's like it's so involved and so into the game that I completely mm. forget what happened before. I'm yeah. just completely involved in the world at that point. And uh, head crab, suddenly <laughs> pasta salad, and it's over. <laughs> I'm sure VR has a lot to do with that too, because the yeah, yeah, enhanced absolutely. immersions. It is just. It is only immersive. Nice. Uh, I think I've got I've got one more game that I don't have a whole lot on because I just started it. Oh, okay, what is it? Uh, Yakuza, I'm gonna fuck up this pronunciation. Yakuza Kiwami 2. Okay. So, um, it is... What is, what is I, this? It's Yakuza 2, but re-released in a new engine and really shiny and runs well on modern PCs, and it's just goddamn beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, uh, if you've never played a Yakuza game, it is Japan Simulator. Like... Yeah, you'll run around as a Yakuza and beat the shit out of people with bicycles and stuff, which is kind of neat, I guess. But the real meat of this game is carry motherfucking Oki. Karaoke everywhere, all the time. You go to bars, you sing some karaoke, <laughs> you eat some sushi, you go to a ramen place, you hit up some batting cages, you play some classic Sega arcade games. That is really what Yakuza is. Like, I I'm sure it's got a story mode. I mean, I've, I've seen a cutscene, a couple of them. And yeah, I guess there's single player and a combat engine and whatever. I played some karaoke, <laughs> some batting cages. <laughs> it was perfect. Nice. It's exactly what it needed to be. Um, so I, I really need to, uh, I really need to get back to it and actually stream it a little bit more because I just got to the spot where all the mini games are because mm -hmm. it, it forced me to do this stupid. Oh, look, here's the story and people you love die and and everything else. I'm just like, man, I just want to play a claw game and get like some some cool, like cute Japanese, like bird figurines out of a goddamn claw machine. Can can we do that? Nah. Oh, you're still bitching because like your sister, brother or something died. All right, dude. Like, I get it. 
you, you really want me to care about the game and these characters? I just want to fucking play. Uh, I just want to play Virtual Fighter Two. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's a you know, there's a, there's always an audience for that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with uh, Yakuza Kiwami Two. So far, it's been fun. I've only played uh, a couple hours, but um, I'm sure I'll have more to say as I get through the game. If that karaoke knows anything like Yakuza Zero, it is going to be my favorite thing in the whole fucking world. So <laughs> you play like a little um, music rhythm game, you know, press the button on the beat and it'll show you like a Guitar Hero style, you know, track of stuff to hit, mm-hmm. um, which is cool. Um, but it doesn't stay that way. Instead, like your guy will be up there singing. It'll be a pretty boring camera angle. You're like, all right, yeah, he's belting it out. Neat. And then it'll turn into like an actual music video of what the song is about. And your dude is like wearing a costume and going nuts. And it's it's the stupidest, cheesiest, most like enjoyable Ugh. thing in the whole fucking world. I love it so much. So, uh, yeah, I will. I'll be playing more of that. Hopefully soon. You should stream it sometime. I should. Ooh, I, I streamed uh, the, the beginning a little bit. And that was that was a hell of a pass pre-flip pass by the way oh 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 I'm, that's I'm, that's I'm sassy go i'm gonna hit f8 on that one f8 grab that numpad minus for my clip i uh that's actually that's way better than f8 mine is right shift right I, shift i never use right shift for anything so okay that's my clip button it's a one easy uh you know one button press holy shit but I keep forgetting to run Give Your Game. So, like, I got some pretty cool goals earlier. We did some in-house games, and they didn't get clipped. Aww. Nothing crazy, but, I mean, like, I haven't clipped anything out in a long time. I can't even remember the last time I submitted something in Plays of the Day. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. Dobby, Dobby throwing, throwing a little bit of shade. I think Comrade Bunny has a better games played list in that house, to be honest. Uh, yeah, no lie. Um, Renee will play all of the builder simulation RPG games that I just don't ever touch. Um, and she plays a lot of fucking weird stuff, like stuff I have never even heard of. She's like, no, this series has been around since like the mid nineties. And you don't know the (laughs) Japanese development company behind it. And this story about the people. I'm just like, nah, dog. Nah, dog. Which is crazy because you're like the guy that knows all that stuff of our group. You're usually the person to go to when it comes to. Uh, there are I certain mean, segments. Seventy two PC used to be a retro game podcast. Like <laughs> there, there are things. genres of games that I am just completely unfamiliar with that she will school me every single fucking time on. Uh, like anything, anything survival game. Yeah, yeah no, nah, I'm, I'm not gonna have it. Uh, right. Any kind of simulation or city builder or like a theme park game or. You know, I like um, Planet Zoo or Planet Coaster. Yeah, she knows all that shit. I just don't. Nice. Oh, I wanted that goal. Uh, but yeah, maybe next time. Other than other than that, um, I haven't really played all that much. Again, I'm following through on um, what I said last week with um, not playing through The Last of Us Part Two because. Uh, after going through Depression Quest in um, in real life in 2020, I didn't really yeah. need to play the video game of that. Yeah. Um, but I decided, and you all are going to be really disappointed with me, I went out, I decided to go out on my own terms. Um, because it's going to be uh, probably a, a little bit until I play this game at all. Uh-huh. Um, and during that time through memes, through people talking about it, through whatever, this game will be spoiled for me, guaranteed. Uh, so uh, I decided to take it upon myself. I would read, I would watch, I would do a bunch of analysis, not just like one person, but a whole lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I spoiled the entire game for myself. Now, oh, I'm not going to get into any of that here. Yes, we will no not spoilers. not into any spoilers whatsoever, except for the fact we're Gandalf Mary's Han Solo. I literally <laughs> cried. It was the most beautiful thing in the world. But other than that, no yeah. story, story spoilers for The Last of Us Part Two. Um, I gotta say, like from what I see of the story, I understand why people are mad. I don't agree with them, but I I 
get where they're coming from. Yeah, um, same. I understand what Naughty Dog was was trying to do, what they did do. And I, at least from what I've seen, it seems like they pulled it off well. Um, but if, if you're mad about the story, I understand. I do. There, there's absolutely an argument made for being mad about the events of the, of the game. Um, I just don't agree. Um, which I think is fine. It's yeah. this is this is why we talk about games yeah. critically, and this is why so, it's an entirely opinion based thing, right? Yeah. So so I also didn't play The Last of Us Two because I don't own a PS4, which made me sad. But um, so I kind of I, in a way, went the same direction with you, as in I didn't want it to get spoiled to me before I could possibly play it or like borrow somebody's PS4 or something. So I just went ahead and found one of those like. PS4 Pro 4K full playthrough, no commentary videos on YouTube. And I just watched the whole game over the course of yeah. this week. Like the entire week, basically after work, I would just watch The Last of Us 2 <laughs> until I, I watched the whole thing. And I did, uh, I didn't like s- skip blindly through stuff, but like if there was a segment with a bunch of combat that didn't have any dialogue or anything, I would like, you know, right arrow key five seconds five seconds five seconds and kind of fast forward through some of the gameplay stuff just because you're not really missing much in those segments like those are to be played the gameplay it's supposed to be fun Mm -hmm. if you're just watching it you know once you know how the gameplay works it's not as engaging but i just i wanted to experience the whole story because the last of us one was one of my favorite games of all time like probably top five um and I wanted to see what they did with the second one. And I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm huge on no spoilers. Like, I am a thousand percent against. I, I think, I hate when somebody says, like, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but you're going to love the twist at the end of, like, a movie oh or something. God. I'm like, no spoiler. like, knowing that there's a twist is a spoiler. It does, yeah. just because you don't know the contents of, of, or specifics of something. Like, I don't watch trailers for stuff I'm interested in. Um, by the way, that twist comment was not had anything to do with The Last of Us 2. I just mean in general with like movies and stuff. Yeah. Um, but the only thing I'm going to say about The Last of Us 2 non-spoilery spoilery, is that I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And uh, I kind of agree with you, Tom. And like, if you're having a rough time right now, uh, maybe don't play it right away. Like, I finished, I finished watching. I watched the ending and everything. I finished it all Thursday evening right before I went to bed. And I've kind of been in a funk since then. Like, I can't stop thinking about it. I've listened to the soundtrack a bunch of times. I watched the ending again. Like, it kind of ruined me there for a few days. Like, not in a... Like, not in a bad way. But, you know, it's, you know, it's emotional, right? Um, But yeah. So I, I watched through it all. I didn't get to play it, unfortunately, but I'm glad I watched through it all. Loved it. I would love to do a spoiler. Um, I don't know what is Dobby saying in the chat? Like a spoiler Which cast. Lot. Yeah, I would love to do a spoiler cast of this game after, maybe after you play it, or if Eric, play, I know Eric will probably play it fairly soon once he's back in Washington and everything. Uh, so Dobby says they share. There's a lot of story not in cutscenes. They share a lot through discussions while exploring and stuff. Isn't that the same way along your spoiler rules, saying you left the game upset? Um, no. I mean, anybody that's going to play The Last of Us knows that it's going to be emotional. Yeah, that's it's, like <laughs> it's not. It's like saying, "Oh yeah, I played this FPS. There's there's some cool guns in it," or like. You know, I played. Yeah, I, I, I played that, this horror like, game, and I was scared. Like, <laughs> if you if you know anything about the series, whatsoever, and I'm not saying which know. I'm not saying which emotions I'm feeling. I'm just saying that it was an emotional experience, and I loved the it. The tone is very apparent. If you have played any part of any game in this series, and by any game I mean the one and its DLC, mm-hmm. um, you kind of know what you're walking into. That's all I'm going to say on that. Yeah, I I would kind of like to play it one day. 
weird that they had Harry Potter in there, though. Like, I did not see that coming. <laughs> like, Harry Potter blown up the Death Star? Fucking weird, man. Yeah. No, I, I Bobby said this Potter is such a... Coming, but Shrek popping out. Yeah. In there, dude. yeah. Dude. Rounding the it Shrek off. Cameo rounding it off with Smash Mouth in the credits. Oh, man. Right? So good. <laughs> it was perfect. But no, uh, VW says it's such a hard conversation to have. I'll wait for the spoiler cast. Yeah, I hate this. Yeah. Convers- I hate this conversation because there's nothing I want more right now than to talk about this game <laughs> right? and its specifics and its depth and what it means and all kinds of stuff. But I just can't. So maybe we'll. Maybe we could. Yeah. Maybe we could do a spoiler cast sometime. We haven't done one in a while. The last one we did, yeah. and the only one we did, was for the Walking Dead Telltale game. Yeah, um, season one. Oh. I would I would love to do another one of those at some point if we can all agree on a game at the same time. Yeah. Um, but that would be fantastic. But yeah, I would love to do a spoiler cast of this. Um, if, if you've played, if anybody is listening and you've played through it all the way, you know, let me know what you thought. I'd love to have a chat. Not like in public Twitch chat, please. No, no, not like, in the Twitch chat. Like, like nope, in DMs. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Do not make me time you out. Yeah, DM me. Slide into my DM DMs me, with man. some juicy Last of Us takes. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we should absolutely do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I went out on my own terms. I'm I'm pretty happy that I did that, honestly. Because on, on one hand, now I, I am not fearful about spoilers because I have spoiled it for myself intentionally. Mm-hmm. Um, and on the other hand, I think it might actually be easier for me to pick this game up in the future. Since I do, you know, know what's coming, um, it's not going to be as, you know, shocking when All Star starts playing during one of the battle sequences <laughs> and you're fighting side by side with Shrek and Donkey. And Robocop. Yeah, but man, we weren't going to talk about spoilers. Now you let them know RoboCop's in the game. <laughs> Come on. No, I'm sorry. That's Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Which, by the way, I I don't play Mortal Kombat, but <laughs> this fact that they put RoboCop in Mortal Kombat is one of my favorite things. Also, <laughs> they didn't do the the modern RoboCop from the remake in what like 2014 or 15 or 16 or something. They did the only one that matters. They did like old school RoboCop and Mortal Kombat. It's fantastic. That's um, thing that I wanted to cover while I was talking about Tarkov that I totally skipped over was <laughs> the Shoreline Scab boss we're going to be getting in 12.7. His Ooh. name is Sanitar. He is going to have a belt fed LMG and a backpack that has a thousand rounds. <laughs> That sounds absurd. Pardon me? That sounds frightening. <laughs> but uh, I can only imagine the f- the five man that, that kills him, one dude picks up that backpack and LMG. Oh, my God. And they wipe the server. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going out. Stop. 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 Entire map vibrates from the... The, <laughs> the sheer the weight. weight. Yeah. And you just hear... <laughs> And I'm pretty sure it's going to be a uh, 76254. So it's going to be the same caliber as like your Mosins and your SVDs. Oh my God. Ooh, dude. All those giant bullets. Jesus Christ. It's going to break everything. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I'm sure it'll be fine as long as it's rare. I just want to be that God. one chonky boy with that, just walking down the map, chatting it up, <laughs> blasting everything in my path. Something I'm really scared for and how it's going to be, how it's going to affect gameplay is the grenade launcher. Mm, I yeah. feel like that's going to change. It's going to change so much about how the game is played. That thing has to be unreasonably expensive or it's going to yeah. <laughs> ruin everything, I think. Because, like, imagine you're like, it's one grenade. I mean, this is still true, like, currently in the, in the game state. You know, you can throw an, an F1 frag, hand grenade, into a room and kill four PMCs. Mm-hmm. But I have to be at, at least, you know... Within yeeting distance. To, right. 10 to 15 mm-hmm. meters based upon my strength level. Mm-hmm. I, can be ac- I could be across the friggin' way, like, super far away with a grenade launcher and pop it into a room and get five kills, just like that. I wonder if it's going to be kind of like... Um... 
Like the people that would throw tomahawks in the Call of Duty games, like right off of spawn to an exact certain spot where they know players will end up. <laughs> like, you're going to have spots like, all right, if you uh, stand on top of this building and look uh, 40 degrees in this direction, slightly up, you can launch a grenade straight into, uh, you know, this room that spawns light X's where all the people go to farm high tier items or whatever. Or, this will launch a grenade right into the quest area everybody's going to be at. <laughs> or, like, for me, like, I, I played a lot of reserve last wipe. And I got, it got to a point where, like, I knew where people spawned. Like, I knew where they were going to be. Mm -hmm. Even, ba like, spawns change based upon, you know, how big your squad is, how big their squads, is, mm -hmm. squads are. Or if it's a solo, like, I, I got pretty good at, you know, figuring out where I'm going to spawn. And then, ba like, judging based off where I spawned where other people are yeah or it like it's really easy to to take people out really early because you know you know early well, early raid you're you know getting your making sure everything's all set you know you're getting looped up with your golden <laughs> star your vaseline <laughs> getting it's all really slick easy. and ready to go <laughs> it's really but easy yeah. to get people off off guard that early in a white or in a raid yeah i don't, I don't know about a rocket launcher especially like a small map like factory where people oh know where the spawns are, that's going to be rough. <laughs> it's going to be explosion simulator. Yep. So, um, I think we've talked about all the games we played this week. Yeah. I think we got it. Are we, are we ready yeah. to move on to the news? Tom, you want to get, get us so started in, on some new stuff? In more non-spoiler Last of Us Part 2 news, uh, Last of Us Part 2 has sold over 4 million copies. Um, all those, uh, the review bombing, the one-star reviews, people complaining, it didn't make a lick of fucking difference. This game sold like fucking hotcakes, and frankly, Naughty Dog deserves for it to have sold well. Um, it's a good game. I get why people are mad again, but uh, yeah. Didn't, didn't really seem to affect the sales numbers at all. Uh, so Naughty Dog and Sony are extremely happy. It's actually the number one selling, fast, number one fastest selling PlayStation exclusive they have ever put out. Nice. Or number one uh, fastest selling PS4 exclusive they have ever put out. Did you say PS1? No, no, I just said PlayStation, which, oh. yeah, it's, it's PS4 specifically. Yeah, fantastic. That's a lot of yeah. sales. Good for them. Yeah. Um, in not-so-fantastic news, uh, depending on who you are, Mixer is shutting down. Microsoft's competitor to Twitch is no more. It's going away. It's dead. Um, nope. You know, high-profile people like Shroud and Ninja have just been given a pile of money and said, yeah, it's been cool, dog. You're, you're free agents. Go wherever you want. I feel really bad in the way that this was handled by microsoft because it was just like completely out of the blue one day yeah. they were just like all right uh, hey mixer's getting shut down um yeah, people can move to facebook gaming if you want and i think a lot of the the high-end streamers didn't find out until they saw the tweet that yep. <laughs> the mixer put out like Not that's a just, like the higher level like it's like yeah obviously the higher level people i'm sure you know like shroud ninja they knew yeah, they, long, uh, they had they had enough of a heads up to you know like okay, gotcha, and then you have your your not so ninja and shroud esque people mm -hmm. who don't find out until the company tweets about it and makes it public. Yeah, that's, and then you uh... have all those people who are you know not even makes their partners who just find out you know the communities that they built over the last however long it's over. They have to like, restart almost immediately. Like I can't remember how far in advance, but like when does it like actually shut down? Yeah, uh, the twenty fifth, right? Uh, was the twenty fifth of July is when it goes offline. Okay. I I... Yeah, it's that's a rough. Little, little over a month. That sucks. Yeah, it's, feel... it's I mean, rough. I mean, I, I'm sure they have their reasons, and I know that. If you're going to, it's, it's a hard sphere to compete in, right? Twitch, right. like it's the site, right? It's the one that started it. It's the one that started game streaming pretty much. Um, it is. It is you've the got this giant. Yeah, exactly. 
It's like starting a mom and pop grocery store and trying to compete with Walmart or something. Like, how yeah. do you even do that? The um, the the only company that's really had any chance at taking Twitch on it's YouTube, um, and they. I'm not going to mince my words here. They've pretty much shit the bed with YouTube streaming. It is it is not the first place anyone goes for live content. Nope. But uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting. In other streaming news, um, we're, we're covering this because it's, it's a big story. We usually don't do stuff on Twitch drama or stuff that's happening with bigger streamers because, you know, to be honest, we just don't care most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> But uh, Dr. Disrespect has been banned from Twitch, and it looks like a permanent ban. Like, channel is unavailable, emotes are, are gone, uh, subs are being refunded, and no one is saying why. Um, the only thing Twitch has said is that, yes, we remove people when they have you know, violated our community guidelines, and we will continue to protect people. Um, cool. Doesn't tell us why Dr. Disrespect was banned at all. Um, Uh, yeah, there's. It's just who who knows at the, yeah. like. You, there's no. So, um, so V Dobby Dobby calls out in the chat. Uh, tweeted minutes ago from Doc. It says Champions Club Twitch has not notified me on the specific reason behind their decision. Firm handshakes to all for the support during this difficult time. So even he doesn't know. I guess why you got perma banned right now. All right. It's wild. Yeah, this is. It's interesting, but that that said, like, there are some things that legally they shouldn't say. Not that they can't, but they shouldn't yeah. say for reasons of defamation or other things. Yeah. That they're not going to be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, this person did this or said this or threatened this. Then, okay, that can get taken to court in so many different ways. Uh, if it was something super public, like, I don't know, man, Doc was like streaming porn for like six days straight. So we banned him. <laughs> cool everybody knows the reason <laughs> but, well, everyone's really quiet and no one knows what's going on like is it something awful is it something um you know relatively minor that just kind of blew up over time did he film somebody in the bathroom again I, I, it's it's no secret that i'm not really the doc's biggest fan mm -hmm. uh but uh it's interesting and uh we'll, we'll have to see where it goes from here unfortunately everyone talking about this it's just speculation People yeah. are like, oh, it's the MCA. Oh, it's sexual harassment. Oh, it's this thing. Oh, it got canceled because of this. Oh, he said something about He's this group of people. He murdered somebody. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, ah, oh, he, he drowns puppies in a bathtub for funsies. Like, okay, all right. Look, it's literally just speculation because nobody yeah. knows what's going on. And apparently, thanks to Tommy for the, for the extremely recent minutes ago update, <laughs> apparently Doc doesn't know what's going on either. So <laughs> who the fuck cares? We'll talk about it when we got more information. Yeah. It's a good lesson, though, like... For people to not just jump into the first thing they read on the internet and like trust Ooh. that, like you just wait until you know actual information before you, you know. So, so seventy two pin connector has heard from several sources that Doctor Disrespect was about to start a blind playthrough of Bubsy three D, and that is why Twitch had to reach out and ban him. <laughs> Uh, because they cannot let something like that on their platform. Now, it's just what we've heard. Again, no official confirmation, but you heard it here first. Bubsy 3D is at play <laughs> somewhere in this scenario. Tom, I know I've asked you this before, but my memory <laughs> is the worst of all time, so I can't even remember what the answer is. But what, what is exactly Bubsy 3D? Can you just give like a really <laughs> short like just context? Um, it is... It is a 3D platformer that is one of the one of the worst games ever made. Like if you before Mario 64, people tried to make 3D platformers. That's what Bubsy 3D played like. It's not good. It's not even passable. It's what, uh, absolute dog shit. What system was it for? Um, like when did it I come out? Say, yeah, I want to say it came out for several. I'm going to look this up now because I'm, I'm ripping on it. Uh, yeah, I thought it was several, but it's saying here PlayStation. Okay. I want to say it released up in on PC as well. Huh. But yeah. Uh Bubsy 3D is, is hot garbage. Uh how many pins for me to stream Bubsy full run? One million. One million pins? 
One million pins. How one long million would it, channel pins. How long would it take to get one million channel pins? One, uh, like, well, channel it'll, points. Go, it'll go faster if you hit us with that tier three sub. <laughs> Don't be begging there. for subs, Tom. That's not how we operate. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just answering the question. It does go faster. It actually bugs me when I see streamers <laughs> like trying to bait out subs and stuff. Like, come right? on, man. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Dobby's asking for a reasonable number. I think a million is very reasonable for, for Bubsy 3D. I wonder how long a playthrough <laughs> of that is. Uh, too long. <laughs> Like, probably 200 <laughs> hours too long. The game itself, I'm sure, is like six hours long, but it's going to feel like 200 by oh, the end. Oh, man. Um, I, uh, I'm actually... I've been considering for a while playing a little bit of Superman 64 on stream. Because it's a god-awful pile of shit, and I think it'd be funny. But you know, <laughs> we, should we'll play, we should play Resident Evil 6 for that reason. Did you ever watch that video I linked you? uh maybe no i didn't it's like didn't. a it is a really really well edited and narrated uh put together video like it's one of those uh youtube channels where they put like he'll put out a video every couple of months but it's like usually it's between like 40 to an hour long and it's really well edited and put together with footage and and all kinds of stuff but uh, nice. yeah, it's a whole video on Resident Evil 6 and why it's, you know, it's not a good game, but it's like the one of his favorite games that released that year. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to have to watch that. But it, it's worth the watch. It's entertaining. And his other videos are fantastic, too. Um, so in other news, um, a Hearthstone player was uh, was blacklisted due to his wife's comments to a low-level blizzard customer service person on twitter what? and her comment was are you fucking serious in what? response to something yeah so his wife made comments and then customer service told the guy because he said hey one where's my invite to this thing because i'm a you know i'm like one of your biggest hearthstone players um can i can i go and they said nah your wife said these things uh you're you're no longer welcome and he's like, wait, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Um, yeah, and uh, Blizzard starts rolling back, as they usually do. It's like, oh, no, we're, we're sorry. The customer service person was clearly uh, confused a little bit. No, you're totally welcome back. And you can have your wife as a guest, even. We, we promise it's all fine. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's, that's a thing. Uh, um, I, like... At this point, with all the stuff about Hearthstone, I I don't know if you were like brand new to those kinds of games and looking to get into it. Why would you jump into a community like that? Right? It would be like like on purpose playing something like League of Legends or Dota Two. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Who would go and just play those on purpose? <laughs> I love you, Dobby. <laughs> But I don't know. It's it's Blizzard being Blizzard. I, at this point, I should probably learn to not be surprised. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that that sucks. And I guess it got better. So all right. Um. So there was there was a story about some person leaving Naughty Dog, um, and two ex IGN editors apparently forced a bunch of gossip into the story. And Naughty Dog called him out on it and said, no, nah, this isn't how it happened. And the writers are like, no, nah, we know our editors forced us to put that in for clicks and clickbait. So cool. They're now X editors. Stuff is coming out of the woodwork. 2020, man. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Dobby is saying, I think Blizzard has had the hardest fall from grace since I've been a serious gamer, honestly. I, I cannot disagree with you. I am 100% in agreement. Like, they were the darling child of here's a mega company that made their money by building, you know, games that our dreams are made of and they can do no wrong. And they're so good. And why can't more companies be like Blizzard? And then they've turned into this. Like, what the hell happened, man? It's I'm honestly, it's kind of depressing. I fucking love Blizzard. Like World of Warcraft it. was my shit. Warcraft three. Holy God. Starcraft. Yeah, man. The the fucking Lost Vikings on the Super Nintendo? That was my shit. 
Um, but yeah, it's it's just unfortunate. Um, How was that a goal? Hello? So speaking, you're just single handedly <laughs> destroying the lobby right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking about um, MOBAs, uh, Nintendo has dropped a weird trailer for a Pokemon MOBA coming to the Switch. If there That's... was ever a MOBA I would play, which I probably wouldn't, uh, it would be Pokemon one. It looks interesting. Now, I'm I'm kind of wondering, like, because we're we're not going to get like Dota two levels of complexity. This is a Pokemon game after all. Mm-hmm. Um, but I kind of wonder how deep these mechanics will go. Um, if anything, it's going to be a good introduction to the um, to the genre for people who are looking for something a little bit lower key. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think be it'll fun. be interesting. I'm definitely going to play it when it comes out, but. Uh, I'm reserving judgment because this thing could go sideways real, real quick. For sure. Did you guys watch any of the the Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay? Yes. I've oh, not seen it. Fucking oh, lot. my God. That game looks gorgeous. I, uh, I will be picking it up. I will not be streaming it. Um, you won't be streaming it. I will not be streaming it. Why not? Um, because so it's a CD Projekt Red game, and from the things that I've read around the more uh, adult-oriented nature of some of the scenes in that game, oh okay, I don't I don't want to have to like be super quick on the on the blackout my Twitch screen. Button. Okay, <laughs> like, holy shit! Big red emergency button. Please don't ba- ban me. Um, so uh, no, I, I will be going through it off stream. Okay, uh, but I'm really really looking forward to it uh from what all the early reviewers said um it looks like it's a giant mess of a pile of systems thrown together like you have you have little hope of knowing how everything is interconnected and how well it all works together but somehow some way it kind of just fits it feels good to play um now you know people only got the first four hours of the game um Mm -hmm. So there's there's a whole lot more game to go, and they are going to be working on it uh, until September, when is the uh, when the projected release date is. Uh, but you you know I'm going to be all over that shit. Yeah, I I think I might get it day one, honestly, and I don't do that a lot for games, but that it just oozes with style and character. Yeah, and I don't know. It just I'm I'm all in. I want to see what's up. I you know it's got a reuse. Yeah, yeah, it's got Keanu Reeves, dude. How how could I get it? how could I not play it? The one. I'm I'm looking forward to Cyberpunk. I I've been looking forward to Cyberpunk since CD Projekt Red announced it. Now they, you know, are not a perfect company. They have put out bad games before. They have treated their employees badly before. I'm looking forward to this, and it looks like they're doing a lot of the right things. Dobby thinks it's going to get pushed again. That wouldn't surprise me at. All. Yeah. Um, be CD Projekt Red is is one of those companies that will keep pushing a game until it's ready, and frankly, it's just Something fucking wrong. fine with me. Yeah. Totally fine with. Me. I'd rather a game get delayed and have it come out as they intend it to, mm-hmm. and it work the way they intend it to work, as it uh, compared to them releasing a game com- on a deadline and it be incomplete and broken. Yeah. yeah. On on Twitter, when CD Projekt Red announced the delay, there were a couple like people replying real quick. Well, just canceled my pre order. Guess I'll pirate day one instead. It's like okay, yeah. A <laughs> pirating doesn't make it come out any faster, dude. <laughs> Where do you think you gotta wait for people to upload that shit? So you're you're waiting like an extra hour or something. Yeah. Uh, B, you're canceling your pre order because they said they don't want to release a shoddy project. Like, all right. I got a bridge I'd like to sell you. It'll get here tomorrow. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Cole? Now, we're, we're talking about people complaining about CD Projekt Red delaying Cyberpunk 2077, and some people on Twitter were like, well, fine, I'll just pirate it. Like, all right, but that's not going to make the game come out any faster, dude. Same same delay. <laughs> still, it's still going to happen. I'd rather wait yeah, on like, a great game than to you know, be able to play a bad game right now. Yeah, so I read uh, a whole bunch of exposés, like uh, Kotaku, IGN had a bunch of stuff on it. I watched um, some of the, like, I think it was like a 15-minute, 
is it 15 or 20? Anyway, um, there's a, a big long segment of no commentary gameplay, and it looks pretty rad. Um, <laughs> it looks really rad. I'm I'm really looking forward. 72 pirate connection, nice. <laughs> Uh, in roguelike news, uh, we we've got we've got a new game that I kind of wish Irk was here for because he fucking loved the first one and so did I. Rogue Legacy is getting a sequel. Uh, I don't know why I'm excited. The game looks like the same exact thing, just a little prettier. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's nothing wrong with that. That's all right. Yeah, that's that's all right. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to Rogue Legacy too. Looks kind of neat. Um, it That's will be releasing neat. into early access at some point. So, yeah. No! Oh, I didn't help. <laughs> I was trying to get the bounce off the crossbar. It's so close. Uh, um, I would count that as a save, personally. Yeah. You stop the ball from scoring. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then I scored it. <laughs> but yeah, scored the it. initial <laughs> hit. <laughs> Let's see, what else do we got? Um, if you liked the NES-style Bloodstained game, um, not Ritual of the Night, but Curse of the Moon, um, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2 is coming out. Uh, so you can, you can look forward to that. That actually released as part of a um, like stretch goal for their, their Kickstarter. They said, hey, if, uh, if you give us this much money, we'll make like an NES-style Castlevania game. And everyone's like, holy shit, that sounds amazing. And they're like, all right, well, it's just like a throwaway side project. Don't get too hyped up on it. And it yeah. came out, and it was critically acclaimed. People fucking <laughs> love that game. Um, amazingly enough, I have not played it. It's like an 8-bit NES game that I haven't played. Not so sure what's seems, wrong with me. Seems like something you should already be playing. Yeah. That's right uh, so there's a second one coming out. It looks pretty rad. I'm excited. Seems like um, it seems like one of those games that you'll put in the show notes and you'll be like, oh my god, I'm so excited. I played this amazing game and I'm like, I've never even heard of it. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> and you get exactly. to explain it to me. Uh, let's see. Oh, also, um, a relatively minor series is uh getting a uh a new sequel. I'm not sure if you guys have heard or even played any of these. Again, very under you know, underknown character. Uh one Crash Bandicoot. Ah yes, Crash. I loved uh, Crash as a kid. Yay, Classic. Crash. Good. Crash Four is coming out. They released a trailer. It looks pretty. Looks like Crash. Like, that's really all that can be said about it. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't get a chance to see it. I'll have to look at that. Yeah, it's Crash uh, Four. It's I, I could get down with Crash Four. I'm into it. It's called. The subtitle is called It's About Time. Crash 4, It's About Time. Is it going to be about time travel? Probably it's going to be, be about, about time travel. travel. Yeah. So that'll be neat. Um, neat. Let's see. Huh. Okay. Time for the happy news. We have a lot of news. We have um, a lot of news. Ubisoft reportedly, according to a whole lot of active and ex-employees on Twitter, has a rampant, toxic, abusive culture of sexual misconduct and abuse. Um, that's fucking awful. Um, so Ubisoft responded to all of these, and they said, hey, we're, uh, we're starting an investigation. Can't exactly tell you nothing, because flaws, but Cause... we're starting an investigation. Oh, I missed that? Really? Oh, sorry. Um, and uh, so, some, some good news. Uh, Ubisoft has suspended several employees, both, like, key upper-level employees and low-level, so across the whole spectrum, for, um, you know, misconduct and uh, basically really, really shitty... Like workplace sexual harassment shit. Um, okay. So at least they're doing something about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, good. I mean, it sucks that they had this problem in the first place. But mm -hmm. like any big company, these kind of things will happen. Um, you know, they, you kind of judge the way the company handles it, yeah. and it sucks that it hasn't been handled up until this point. But 
they are doing the right things today and hopefully they continue and that they can fix this culture. Um, yeah. For sure. Uh, Bubble Bobble 4 announced. What? On, what? Uh, huh? Do, do what? you guys never play Bubble Bobble? Come on. <laughs> I, don't even know I don't even know what, what that, is. that is. Oh my God. Okay. It's, a, it's an NES game. It has literally one song. It is infectious. Um, it is... It might hold a special place in my heart because it is the very first video game I have ever played. Oh, okay. uh, and it's it's all right. Like I'm I'm not going to pretend <laughs> that Bubble Bobble is the greatest thing in the world. It's fine, <laughs> but I am excited because Bubble Bobble hasn't seen like a real release in in a while. Uh, so Bubble Bobble Four coming out, and Puzzle Bobble is getting that's a VR game. release. That's how that game ends. That's how that game ends. Apparently, yeah. It's the way we, the cookie crumbles. Yeah, we have we have the best Rocket League games during the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bubble Bubble Four. Announces, and also, it, it was on my list, Dobby. I did not actually forget this. It's just at the bottom. Mojang uh, is launching its first DLC pack for Minecraft Dungeons next week, July first. It is coming. If you are looking for more Minecraft Dungeons, which I know a whole lot of people in our community are, uh, buckle cool. up. It's here. That's good to hear because I I know a lot of the people said that they they really liked the game but there wasn't a whole lot there yet, mm. so this is the answer to that. So fantastic! Anybody yeah. who was interested has more content. Um, and Sony is announcing the uh, the new PlayStation bug bounty program. So if you're an enterprising hacker, if you are one of the white hat people who wants to like hack onto stuff, tell companies a, about the uh, the shit ball that is their platform and make some money while doing it. Check out Sony's bug bounty platform. You can both make the PlayStation network safer and make some cash while doing it. So no downsides here. Get to hacking. Let's go. Yeah, I'm coming. Oh, I was oh say, I'm already out of the lobby. <laughs> oh, uh, and and I think that's all the news. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> uh, no, Dobby, the, Sony is not. It's not like acting like you know bounty hunting is new. They're not acting like bug bounties are a brand new thing that they just created. They're just finally hopping on board the fucking train of if you want security professionals to make your platform safer instead of you know selling bugs to anyone who will pay them, um, you have to have a bug bounty program, and now they do. So that's a good thing. Nintendo's got one. Microsoft has got several for all of their platforms. And now Sony's got one for the PlayStation. So this is all a good thing. Um, but yeah, that's that's all the news I have. I, I realize they were a whole lot of quick hits. Um, yeah, that's it. Fantastic. That's you what, that's all you got? You got nothing else for us? I huh? got nothing else. You're not getting gonna get one more nickel out of me. I'm out. I'm out. That's it. That's all, all you get. Right. All, you get. <laughs> all right. Well, then uh, let's do the whole social media rundown thing, and and we can get on out of here. Um, if you really go to 72pinconnector.com, it's got all of our links on it. Um, we've got a merch store, uh, links to all of our social media accounts and stuff like that. Um. On Twitter, you can tweet at us at 72PC underscore official. Um, every day we post a play of the day. This is just a clip from any game from our community that post from our Discord. We put in Twitter every single day. And then at the end of each month, we make a nice little montage of the best plays. So uh, if you want to contribute to that, join our Discord and uh, maybe get on some of that. Um, Discord links are down below on our Twitch. If you're listening on the podcast apps, uh, twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. Um, we, we stream our podcast there live every Saturday at 9 PM EST. Uh, we actually like talk to the chat and stuff during the podcast and we play games and stuff. So it's, it's a little different. You, you probably notice that if you're listening, uh, hearing us commentate on the games and stuff while we play a little bit too. So if you're into that kind of thing, you can watch it live. That's kind of neat. Uh, YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash 72 pin connector. Uh, we're getting a little lucky with the URLs here, which is fantastic. Uh, we post our plays, our, our monthly montages there. We post some podcast clips and full episodes of the podcast on there too. And hopefully some, some cooler stuff in the future. We'll see what happens with that. Um, 
check out Rob's Twitch channel. He twi- he uh, he streams some Escape from a Tarkov. That's twitch.tv slash S-M-K-E underscore underscore. Uh, you can just call him Smoke. That's two That's- underscores for the price of one. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Rob. I really appreciate yeah, it. It's fun. You. Absolutely, guys. It Thanks for all- having me. It was awesome having you on. It was a blast to be here. <laughs> And uh, that's all we have for you guys. So until next week, a game on. Bye. Adios, everybody. Bye.